today we're looking at the fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane. This is the membrane that surrounds cells and some of the organelles that are inside the cell as well. But before we go on to look at the detailed structure of that, I just want to do a quick recap on our triglycerides, link it to certain molecules that are in this membrane and link that to how the membrane actually behaves. So you may remember from the previous video that we, or that I did, um, we had something called a triglyceride here. And it looks quite complicated in this diagram here, but if you look back at the other video, you'll see it's actually reasonably uh, simple. Our triglyceride consists of a glycerol end of the molecule and three fatty acid chains. And when we draw it more simply, it looks like this. So we've got the glycerol over here, and we've got three fatty acid chains and because we've got three of them we call this a triglyceride. Probably worth mentioning here that sometimes the fatty acid chain is referred to the referred to as the R group. And the reason we call it the R group, you may remember we had an R group, we had R groups in amino acids as well. The R group just means that the region is variable or that part of the molecule is variable. And our fatty acids can vary in that there could be three different fatty acids here joined onto our glycerol um, and that's why we call it an R group. Now this is actually linked to a very special molecule that's found in our cell surface membrane or our plasma membrane and that molecule is called a phospholipid. And the phospholipid molecule looks a little something like this. Okay so um, still looking quite complicated but actually it's not that difficult once you look at it. We've got a very similar structure to our triglyceride only we have instead of two uh, instead of three fatty acid chains we only have two and one of the fatty acid chains is replaced by this section of the molecule here and we call that a phosphate group a phosphate group there I've done in orange now it's not necessarily important for you to memorize how this structure is put together it's important for you to remember that the uh, one of the fatty acid chains is replaced by a phosphate group and that gives this phospholipid molecule certain important characteristics. Now if we were to draw a simpler version of our phospholipid and this is how I'm going to draw the phospholipid from now on uh, the details being on this slide here if you need to refer back but this is our phospholipid molecule and the important feature that it has because of the little change in structure is that it is oops, it is polar Polar just means that it has, or polar molecules are molecules that have parts that are different in their characteristics. And in terms of our phospholipid, we have two characteristics that we link to our phospholipid molecules. The first one is to do with the head of the molecule, which is this orange part here. We call this hydrophilic. Philic, remember, is spelt with one L. So it's the hydrophilic head hydrophilic head uh, and hydrophilic means attracted to water. You may have heard this described as water loving which is fine if that helps you to uh, remember what the, what the property actually is but technically you shouldn't say water loving when you're describing it. You should either describe it, describe it as uh, hydrophilic or hydrophilic which means attracted to water. Okay so that's that uh, one part of the molecule. The other part of the molecule has the opposite feature and that is that it's hydrophobic and again you might have uh, heard that described as water hating but we mustn't use that um, we use the terminology hydrophobic or that it's actually repelled by water or it repels away from water okay so the molecule is polar it has a hydrophilic head which is attracted to water and a hydrophobic tail which is repelled by water and this is very important because this actually produces the very basic structure of our cell membrane. But let's have a quick look at how these molecules behave in water. So here's our phospholipid here, the hydrophobic tail and the hydrophilic head. If you put a bunch of these in some water you might see them behaving like this and you can imagine then because the tails are hydrophobic they are trying very hard to be away from the water and they can actually be found to be poking up out of the water and in other circumstances you'll see them Actually, if they're forced or pushed under the water, they'll form these spherical shape called missiles or micelles. 
um, and you can see the tails pointing inwards there pushing away or being repelled by the water and a layer of the hydrophilic heads producing this the, the circle or the, or the sphere shape on the outside in other circumstances if you get enough of these molecules together you'll see that you form a phospholipid bilayer and that's the double layer that we see there two layers of phospholipid molecules the actual distance across here is around about seven to ten nanometers depending on which book you look at and if you imagine something like a ribosome which is around about 15 to 20 nanometers you can see that's quite thin in comparison to all of the other organelles that are in the cell so this is the basic structure of the uh, plasma membrane but that's not the whole story because the plasma membrane uh, has varying roles and those roles can't be fulfilled just by this double layer. If you actually look at the structure of the plasma membrane it looks a bit more like this. This is not the, the best drawing in the world but it shows the different parts and we'll go through those quickly in a minute. It is important mentioning here uh, the reason why we call this the fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane. The reason why we say fluid is because it can move, there's movement allowed. These lip, uh, phospholipid molecules can move around, they're not just rigidly stru uh, stuck in their structure. So we have the fluid part or the fluid description and the mosaic means that it has, well, it doesn't mean it has proteins, but mosaic is a, like a pattern of different tiles, if you like, and the surface of it might look like uh, a pattern of different tiles because we have these other structures there uh, which are the proteins which we'll look at in a sec but these this is a slightly more accurate uh, representation of what the molecule might look like we have these parts here that are proteins um, fulfilling different uh, roles and we'll look at that in detail in a minute we have these branches of carbohydrate chains sometimes attached to proteins sometimes attached to the lipid and we also have um, a structure this is actually a amino acid chain or a polypeptide that's uh, spanning the molecule there which again might have a carbohydrate chain attached to it but let's have a look at this in what might be a more accurate version of what it looks like here I've got my cell with a big gap and the reason why I've got a big gap up here is because it's got all this detail here so if I've got my uh, cell over here you can see I've highlighted part of the membrane if we magnify that part of the membrane we see uh, a slightly more accurate version of what the plasma membrane might look like okay so we've got our phospholipid bilayer here phospho lipid bilayer and uh, that we've already described uh, if we go around the diagram one at one part at a time down here we've got a polypeptide chain so that's a chain of amino acids you can see that it spans across the membrane cut and pokes out the other side um, these little regions over here are actually carbohydrate chains and these carbohydrate chains in this case that are attached to this polypeptide you can actually call this a glycoprotein which basically means a protein with a carbohydrate chain attached moving around we have another glycoprotein over here uh, this protein is actually globular in its nature it's not a uh, polypeptide chain uh, and this glycoprotein spans all the way across the membrane we sometimes refer to this as an intrinsic protein and the reason why I'm calling this a glycoprotein because this also has a carbohydrate chain attached to it as well moving around we have some molecules of cholesterol now usually we link cholesterol to uh, coronary heart disease or being bad for you and blocking up arteries and that sort of thing but cholesterol actually is needed by the body it has a couple of roles but one of those is building or helping to build cell membranes and you can see the uh, cholesterol mo molecules in between the molecules of the phospholipids there and what they actually do is actually give some kind of rigidity rigidity or 
a stronger structure to the membrane. The more cholesterol molecules we have, the more rigid and less fluid the membrane is, and the less cholesterol molecule has, uh, cholesterol molecules it has, the more fluid it is. And this actually can be linked to uh, helping the membrane to resist higher temperatures. So, for example, some bacteria in their cell membranes have a higher amount of cholesterol molecules and membranes within the cell around some of the organelles will have much fewer cholesterol molecules uh, all depending on the type of rigidity that is needed by the membrane so moving around uh, we said over here we've got our uh, um, carbohydrate chain but when it's attached to a phospholipid molecule we call it a glycolipid so it's a carbohydrate chain attached to a lipid or in fact the phospholipid so we call it a glycolipid and uh, the next one here is another example of a protein but this one I'm calling a channel protein so again it's an intrinsic protein because it uh, spans the whole membrane but in this case you can see it's actually got a channel that goes all the way through the middle um, to the other end so this is the inside of the membrane here this would be the outside and therefore you can imagine that substances can travel through there so those are the main labels that we have uh, what you need to be also aware of is the roles of the glycolipids and glycoproteins and so on so if we're looking at the glycoprotein this has a job in cell recognition the way in which cells recognize each other but it also acts as a receptor it's a point where certain other molecules that need to uh, target the cell or need to attach to the cell actually uh, do find the point at which to attach to the cell. Uh, the, an example of something that this molecule might actually attach to, uh, something like a hormone. So trying to squeeze in there, a hormone. Um, a role which is similar to our glycoproteins is our glycolipid. These also act as receptors but these might be for different types of molecules. Uh, one example is um, cholera toxins. We'll look at that later when we do our video on cholera. But uh, again, glycolipids also act as receptors. And remember, the glycolipids and the glycoproteins basically have a carbohydrate chain attached to them. So those are the various parts of the plasma membrane and the roles they fulfill. You should be aware of what the different parts do and you should be able to label one of these diagrams based on what we've got here. There is one quick thing I want to cover before we finish up and that is the fact that these um, the plasma membrane actually is present in other organelles as well. So the example I've taken here is a mitochondria plucked one out of the cell there. If we were to look in more detail at the inner membrane there, say, uh, you'll notice that the structure will vary slightly from the structure of the plasma membrane on the outside. In this case, we've got a bunch of proteins which are embedded in the membrane there. Did I label this before? I can't remember. We call these extrinsic, extrinsic proteins. If the actual protein is lying on top of the membrane not quite buried in it we might call it a peripheral protein but the inner membrane here for the mitochondria has these proteins uh, embedded in it and they have a different role in respiration and the structure is slightly different to what you might find with the plasma membrane so the basic structure is the same the actual details of the structure might be different depending on what the membrane is doing. Okay, so I've gone on long enough for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.